Phones can be our best friends, but also our worst enemies, especially when it comes to focusing on work, school, or any other task at hand. There are so many apps, so many notifications which distract us all the time, and it becomes so difficult to accomplish whatever we are working on. So it's important that we surround ourselves with tools which help us stay productive and stay focused. Fortunately, there are so many of those inbuilt tools in our iPhones, but we do not use them because we are not aware of them. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about top 7 plus 1 bonus productivity tools in your iPhone which will increase your productivity and also will help you save your money from downloading apps that you don't need. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first one is the most obvious but the most important one. Time limit on apps. Because there are so many social media and communication apps like WhatsApp on our phones and they can be very distracting. So just open the settings app and search for screen time. They will find an option which will be called app limits. Tap on that and turn on that toggle. Once the toggle is on, you will be able to add apps to this list and apply time limit to it. I have 30 minute time limit for Instagram, 2 hours time limit for YouTube and 1 hour time limit for Reddit. I'm changing the time limit of Instagram from 30 minutes to 1 minute so I can show you guys how it works. Although I have already exhausted my time limit of Instagram for this day, but I can tap on ignore limit and get an additional 1 minute or 15 minutes. And I can also ignore the time limit for the entire day, but I do not suggest that because then the whole idea of putting time limit on the app is entirely wasted. So if there is something urgent that you needed to do, maybe save a video or drop a DM, then you can get an additional 1 minute or 15 minutes if that's what you want by tapping on ignore limit and you can get done with your task. And once the task is done, you can tap on OK and then you will be exited from the app. It's very easy. This thing is very, very useful because this way I don't lose track of my time when I'm browsing through Instagram or any other social media app. I just have to go on this setting, just put a time limit on the app and then it's done. When my whole 30 minutes have passed, I get this screen where I am reported that I have used this app for 30 minutes already and then I'm back on my task and this way I'm not wasting my time anymore. Additionally, there is one more setting which is called downtime. We can schedule it for the entire day and put time limits on it like from 7 a.m. in the morning to 8 p.m. in the night. And I can also schedule it for particular days in a week like maybe Monday to Friday which are my working days. Once this is done, I can go back and tap on communication limits. This is where the magic happens. I can tap on during downtime and here I can select which specific contacts of mine will be able to contact me when the downtime is on. So besides them, no one else will be able to contact you. And this really saves you time because you do not let other people who can really disturb you contact you anytime they want. So you can turn on the downtime when you're working, studying, doing a particular task or even when you are sleeping so that people who are not important cannot disturb you as they feel like. Like. The next tip that I have for you guys is background sounds and you do not need any app for that. I have seen people download multiple apps on their phone when they want to listen to background sounds while studying, working, reading a book or maybe doing any task at their hand and they even pay for premium subscription for that. But you don't need to do any of it. It's free and you do not need to have any app on your phone, especially if you listen to music, I mean sounds like rain, ocean, white noise, you know, basic background sounds. So to have this in free, go to settings and go to the search bar. There, search for control center. And once the control center option is visible to you, you just have to scroll a little down and find this option, which is called hearing. If you do not have it added already, just add it by tapping on the add icon, which is in green color. Once it's done, go to the right hand side, swipe down, and there you will find an icon which is in the shape of an ear. I'm starting the screen recording so you guys can listen to the sounds in real time and decide for yourself if you like them or not. So once you tap on the ear icon, you will find one more ear icon at the bottom of the screen and then you can decide the type of sound you want to listen to and adjust its volume by moving the slider here and there. There are many sounds to listen to. There is ocean sounds, rain sounds, bright noise, balanced noise. There's a stream sound as well. So there are like six or seven of them. You can just choose whatever you like and then you can just play it, keep your phone at side 
and it will just keep playing and that's why you do not need any sort of background sounds app on your phone and you don't even need youtube app for that so if you were refraining yourself from deleting the youtube app on your phone because you used to listen to background sounds you can now do it very easily the next inbuilt tool that we have in the iphone is in the books app so if you love reading books and you cannot pay for kindle unlimited subscription and if you haven't heard of it then kindle unlimited is a paid subscription on amazon through which you can get multiple books on amazon for free although the collection of kindle unlimited is wider than the book app of iphone but still that is like paid but if you open the books app and go to the bookstore there you will find different genres like fiction and literature and then when you swipe down there will be a column which will be called top free there you will be able to get many books which are from different genres for free you don't have to pay for it at all for example right now i am downloading the alchemist and as you can see i didn't pay for it even a single rupee or a single dollar and now i'm downloading the pocket dictionary so this is how this app works. You can download many books from this selection. The selection is not very huge, I must say. Apple can do a lot better in this department and if they do, it will be really, really helpful for people who love to read. But there is one more good side of having this app. Let me show you guys what is it. If you want to have a free book on a books app but you do not find it there, just go on Google, search for the PDF of the book that you want to read. Although I do not suggest that you do it all the time, but I understand sometimes students are on budget. So in that case, download the PDF of the book and open it in the books app. If you do not find it in the slider, tap on more and there you will find the books app at the bottom. Tap on that and your PDF will open in the books app. After that, you're free to read your PDF as a book and that PDF will also be saved as a book in your bookshelf of the books app. While you're reading, you're free to make notes, highlights, we can share the sentences or the quotes you come across, you can look for the meaning of the words that you don't know the meaning of. So it's a very flawless experience of reading the book in totally free and you do not have to pay anything at all. And yes, one more thing, you can also translate the sentences that you want to translate in any language that you want to. I don't know how is it going to be useful for some people. Maybe the people who are learning a language can find it really helpful. But yes, it's there. The next tip that I have for you guys is the notes app. Now it's very obvious, but I just feel like sometimes notes app is not used to its full potential. Especially when it comes to students and people who work, they can do a lot in it. They can create tables and those tables can be converted to text in just one single tab. For example, I'm creating a table right now which has a difference between geology and geography. And now I can just convert it into text in just a single tab. I can remove that text and then I can scan text right from my camera without clicking any picture. For example, I will slide this notebook right in front of me. And then I'll see if the camera is able to detect the text. So on my notebook, there is written version one and see the camera detected that text and now it's in my notes app. So notes app can do a lot and this is just nothing. This is like barely scratching a surface. So if you guys want me to make a separate video on it, let me know in the comment section below. I will do that. Also, you can change your background from plain to grid or you can also get a line background, which is like great. So as I said, one of the many things that you can do. The next tip that I have for you guys is reminders. Sometimes there are tasks which need to be done before the deadline or on a particular day. In that case, create a reminder because reminders can do a lot more for you than you can imagine. Sometimes you just need a tiny nudge that this needs to be done, just do it. And your iPhone can do it for you. So just go to the reminders app and create a reminder. Give it a title, assign it a date, and you can assign it a time if you want to. If you do not know at what time of the day you are going to do that task, that's totally fine. Just turn off the time toggle. You can also repeat it on weekdays, weekends, daily, whatever it is. I do not want to repeat it, so I will tap on never. Then there is a one messaging section. We will talk about it later. And then there is a priority section. If you tap on the medium priority, you can see there are going to be two exclamation marks in the beginning of the task title. If it was high priority, there were going to be three exclamation tasks 
in the beginning there it is so just decide your priority according to that your title will just show up how much of a priority task it is once the task is created you can also assign it a subtask for example my task was to create a video and i was shooting two videos in a day i can add my video topic as subtasks in that task and once one of my videos was done i can tap or mark that subtask as done so this is how smooth and easy this app is now coming to the messaging option that i was talking about just turn on the when messaging toggle and choose a contact from your list i have blurred the screen because i wanted to keep my contact list private but yes this is how you do it once the contact is selected you are basically done i have already assigned the date and time to my task which is like one minute after this because i wanted to show you guys how this works so i'm just going to go to the i messages now and type a text to the contact that i assigned to my task so now while i am typing the message once the message is sent my reminders app will send me an automatic reminder and this is how this option is like very useful so if you want yourself to be reminded of something when you are talking to someone so you guys can be reminded of talking about it this option can come in really handy and now coming to the next app which is a clock app and we are going to use it for something that you might not have thought about so we use the clock app for setting alarms setting timers and using a stopwatch but today we are going to use it for something else let's say that we want to set a timer for one minute four seconds i have not started it yet i am here in the youtube app and i'm going to play a rainy day background sound video and i'm gonna come back to my clock app and when timer ends i'm gonna select as stop playing there are many options you can set tones but we're gonna slide to the end and tap on stop playing remember that and now i'm gonna start the timer i'm just gonna lock my phone and the sound is playing right now as you can see and now once the one minute four seconds will be passed the video will be paused itself and this is how you make the youtube videos on your phone with background sounds pause itself with this timer and we can also use a different clock for our stopwatches like this one if you like the dials the antique ones a lot so use that some people are not aware of it you can set alarms which is the obvious one and i don't think that i need to talk much about it and then there is a world clock option as well i sometimes need to take a look at la time so i have it selected you can add any country you want so whenever I am reading a book or let's say I am studying or working, I just play the video on YouTube and then I set a timer and then I lock my phone and then the video will stop itself once the timer ends. So this trick can come in really handy when you are working, studying or reading a book and you want the background sound to stop itself. The next tip that I have for you guys is in the mail app. So many people don't use the mail app of iPhone because maybe it's boring or maybe we just take it for granted because it's there for free. But it has actually very cool uses which I discovered while I was searching for tools to make this video. So I'm just gonna type a hypothetical mail to someone and then I'm just gonna long tap on the send icon and now you can see that I have the option to send this mail at any time I want. I don't have to go in the mail app and then send the mail at the time that I desire. I just can schedule it and then it's done. I don't have to take care of it. So this thing is like really, 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 really useful. I cannot just stress enough on that. Once the mail is scheduled, it will reflect in the send later section and you can access it anytime you want. Then there is a folder which is called remind me. And let me show you guys how it's used. So just in case you come across a mail that you really want to read thoroughly, but you don't have the time for it, the mail app can remind you at your desired time to read it. And 
you don't have to start it you don't have to remind yourself or set a separate reminder in the reminders app for that you just can do it from right here just tap on this reply icon and then there is an option which is called remind me and set your desired time for it which is remind me tonight remind me later remind me at the time that i want to so then it will reflect on the remind me folder and i can just chill and the mail app will send me notification that i need to read this mail thoroughly super easy and that matcha sip was important now coming to the last app of our video which is the calendar app we can use this calendar app so much more and if we just adjust or tweak it a little bit we can use it as a planner let's say that on this particular day i have tasks which are called read a book for half an hour shoot productivity app video or shoot stumble guys youtube video so i have these tasks and i have assigned them as work and i can also create alerts for it if i want to i can add in one more task if i want in fact, there is no limit to how many tasks I want to add in a particular day. Let's say that I have a task which is called make coffee and I am just going to tap on all day because there is no desired time for it. If I want to give it a time limit, I can do it. I can just give it a time bracket. I can just decide when I want to start it, when I want to end it. If I'm going somewhere, I can also put in the travel time and how long is it going to take for me to reach at a particular place and if i want to repeat it every day every week every two weeks every month i can do that as well i don't want to repeat it so i will do that and i am gonna put it in the home section right now because coffee is for chilling at home so yes and it's done i can show as free because you know it's a free task not a busy task if it was something related to work then i would put it as busy so now you can see it's there in a different color because the rest of the tasks are work tasks so yes we can use this calendar app as a planner as well which a lot of people don't if we tap on this icon then we can see the tasks that we have for our day and if there are tasks that we need to know the details of but we don't we can just go to the search bar type in the task name sorry for that and we will find the details for it super easy and when we create a task there is an option for it which is called invitees we can put in the mail id that is an apple id and the name of the people there and this way they will be updated and linked to that task that we are creating in the same way other people can do it for us so we will be updated about the task that they have created so guys that was it for today's video I hope that you came across something which was super useful to you. When I was making this video and I was researching for this video, I came across so many tips and tricks which were super useful to me. And that made me understand that so many times we do not tap into the fullest potential of the devices that we hold in our hands. And as a creator, it's my responsibility that if I come across something like that, I have to share it with you guys. So let me know in the comment section below if this video was useful for you and if there are any questions that you need me to answer and i will see you guys in my next video till then bye